Um, all right, so we were talking before we went into break. You said that you always wanted to write, you know, political thrillers, which I, I, I've never seen any of your work have any of that kind of essence to it. Yeah, this this one, um, on book one, I sat down and thought, if I were to take over the world, how would I take over the world? And the scary thing is it took me less than an hour to figure out how to do it. And it <laughs> it's also, really, it's really it, not that hard because everybody's <laughs> doing it nowadays. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well if, if you have control of electricity, mm-hmm. if you have the control of power, mm-hmm. then then you have, mm-hmm. you know, you can do it. So I, I took I took that. It's like, how would I take over the world using electricity? And it actually it actually made sense. And so that's how I built it. But. What I realize is that the PR game that goes along with politics. So, for instance, in book two, Michael Vay, they've destroyed a, a major power plant. Mm-hmm. This is a good thing. These are really bad people. Hatch is upset because his corporation spun it wrong. It's like, did people cheer the terrorists? They brought down nine, brought down the buildings on nine one one. You are attacked by terrorists. Yeah, and you, it's mm-hmm. the it's electric ama- plan are terrorists. Yeah, it's amazing how the good guys in this story have been spun now by those who have power as terrorists. So the the right. the good guys are the bad guys to the rest of the world, and they just don't know. The people don't know, right? Because they've been spun. So now, so now Hatch in in the, in the next book we're going to see, he's, he's going to start buying up uh, actors and. Mm. And, and celebrities. I'm going to give you a pushing. book called the um, uh, the road that we are traveling, um, because you should you should read at least a couple at least like at least one chapter in it. It is the guy who coined the phrase the New Deal, and he says this is it. This is who we're going to become, and it's all of this stuff. Mm. It's 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 everything that's happening to us right now. But it is how to take over the world and how to change the world, and it does say uh, take over the power. Make sure you have all of the power plants and all of the control of all the natural resources and, and everything else. Um, the um, I'm reading the part where um, I don't want to give anything away on this book, but um, there's a there's a scene where um, the bad guy, you know, there's no honor among thieves. How, how can I explain this? When the bad guy takes over from the other bad guys, <laughs> the really bad guy, you know, takes takes the control from the the mildly bad guys in the corporation. Um, and I would never sit down and read a Vince Flynn novel with my kids. You know, there's just no way I'm going to read a Vince Flynn novel to my kids because it's, it's too intense and, um, and just too much violence and everything else for my kids. I like Vince Flynn novels. You told this takeover of this ship in such a way to where it was absolutely real it had all of the, it had everything in it that would happen, but yet you told it in a way like Hitchcock would tell it. I had no problems. I was thinking about it in the break. I had no problems reading that part of the book with my kids. None. Because it was, it was Hitchcock. Well, there's one of the things I've learned, especially because my readers tend to be very sensitive, um, and now I'm dealing with their kids, it's, it's, and my own children are going to read it. You know, you don't have to put a swear word in there. You can say he mm-hmm. erupted in a string of profanity. You know, you want to represent these people correctly. They're not, oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, you shot me. You know, it's like, it has to be correct, but there's ways to do it that are tasteful and that, that leaves it more to the imagination. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's it's the imagination. Uh, my, my daughter did think the part where they put them in the cell was a little bit scary. Um, oh, no, no, no. I, I don't, don't get me wrong. It is scary. Yeah. Um, and it is intense, but it is not inappropriate. And then again, not inappropriate. I, cause I, what I was thinking during the break was I didn't have a problem with that. I was thinking that's one of my favorite scenes. And I thought I didn't have a problem with that reading that. And it was a really intense scene. There was nothing inappropriate. And yet you wrote it in such a, uh, an, an artful fashion that I also, as an adult, didn't feel cheated. I didn't think, oh, you know, this is a kid's book. Boy, that wouldn't that be good if it was... It, it was good. It was good. good for them and good for me. That's, that's that, real that skill. Was, thank you. That was my hope. Um, someone once said, as a comedian, it's easy to get, get up there and use the F word. It's, it's, it's difficult to be funny and, and not have to rely on scatological humor. Um, it takes intelligence. 
And that's what I wanted the book to be intelligent. I wanted to get certain theories across. How do takeovers get over? And there's a lot of research went into it. I looked at some of the things Hitler did when he when he took over the party. It's like I there was a lot of research that goes on behind it. And so, um, you know, adults and the more intellectual readers will read it and might see some similarities like, yes, this oh, has yeah. happened before. As part of your research, do you go to the places that you talk about? Like, did you go to South America yes, to it, um, yes, research that, the area and all that? My editor said after she read, um, read it, she goes, you've been in the jungles, the Amazon jungles, haven't you? I said, we built an orphanage in there. My brother owned a lodge. I have been over... Mm. Prana, yeah, crocodile infested waters at midnight hunting crocodiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's stuff in so, there yeah. that I, I I had no. It's one of those books yeah, too. I, I've, you spe- can... I've, I've spent I've spent weeks in the jungle. So, Rafe I, and I, I went out. Wait, Rafe and I went online because you described per, uh, certain places, and I'm like, I think he I think he actually went to the jungle to <laughs> yeah. do this. And I said, let's look some of this stuff up. We got online. We were looking, and we got lost online just looking at some of the things that you were talking cool. about in the book. So it's it's great that way, too. The, the one funny thing is the natives speak language. I wanted the language to be coherent. So I took Mandarin Chinese, which I speak, and I phoneticized it, thinking, well, the Chinese won't be able to read it because it's in, in Romanized. And Americans don't read speak Mandarin. And it's been about, I've got about 30 people who figured it out <laughs> and have said, how come they're speaking Chinese? So, so the, so the natives are actually speaking Chinese. That is funny. Um, okay, one, just one last thing, and I just want to get this uh, um, across that this is not a mission book. This is a good story, a great story. The added benefit is uh, Richard and I both believe that Kids are much smarter than we give them credit for, um, much smarter than the media uh, gives them credit for. I mean, I announced last week that it is my intent uh, to have a one of our one of our programs on this network produced entirely by kids, and I don't mean like kids and then and then the adults are going to be back you know back in the you know control room smoking cigars and telling them what to do no i mean it will be start to finish produced by kids we had kids that fought in the revolutionary war that were 12 why can't they produce a stupid tv show why can't they understand the events of the world why do we treat them like they're morons he doesn't um and the the other important thing is is that we both believe that the power of the imagination is the strongest thing that we have in our favor. That Americans and all people can imagine anything. And if they can imagine it and see it, they can make it happen. And we are losing our imagination. And uh, Richard is working hard to bring it back, and you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. I have a quote on my wall that says, our lives are much more influenced by imagination than circumstance. No it, idea what that means, but it sounds really good. <laughs> it does. I, I was it too does. stupid yeah. to understand yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Kids certainly couldn't <laughs> understand that. Richard Paul Evans, Michael Vay. It is the third book in the series. If you haven't read the other two, you can pick them up um, and, and pick it up at Walmart. They've got the book where it's two in one. Um, but you can pick it up wherever books are sold. If you've been reading it, today is the day that you can finally begin to read it, uh, the third installment with your family. Pick it up because there's uh, seven in the entire series, and we're not even halfway, and you're going to love this ride with your family. Michael Vay, available in bookstores or wherever books are sold today.